happened is with me. Now, I, hang on. Are you saying that the 66% they they want well-being more than career advancement? Richard, the truth is they want it all. <laughs> they 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 want career advancement. They certainly want societal issues brought up, and they also want personal well-being. So companies are going to have to juggle. And Edelman, for instance, is coming back hybrid three days a week uh, in the office, two days out. And that's our best version of ourselves. How, in the debate, obviously, that you had within, um, do you worry about losing talent to those companies like the social medias and the Facebooks, etc., who say, work from home forever? I think actually that the basic theory is community matters and I can have more civil conversations with my coworkers than I can actually with my neighbors and that people want to discuss societal issues they want to be in a group and I think people are willing to come back three days a week three days seems to be and provided not everybody takes the Monday and the Friday but then we're getting into the logistics aren't we of how it works I think what I'm really trying to say here do you get the feeling that bosses have understood people want to work from home, they want the flexibility? I think what bosses maybe have underplayed is they have a special position right now. My employer is the most trusted institution. Really? My CEO is far more trusted than average CEOs. My company's newsletter is much more trusted than mainstream media. But you can't overplay your hand. People have been shocked in the last two years by the pandemic. They've changed patterns of life, patterns of, 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 of being. And so therefore, I think a transition is necessary. But if you take the trust barometer and you take the pandemic and now you extrapolate into it the recession that's coming that you heard Michael Gapen talking about that you're familiar with, if economic times get harder, what happens then? I still think that the workers are saying we want a new deal. We definitely what is don't. That deal? The deal is give me three days in, two days out. I'm prepared to change some, but I'm not going to go back to the way it was because I really value work life balance, but I also want to be sure that my family's good. As a CEO of a large company, how how much of a responsibility do you feel to make sure employees have work life balance? And the reason I ask that is the big banks, the Goldmans, the Morgans, the BOAs, whatever, they'll, they'll have the right policies, but there's an, a subculture underneath that says, you've got your work, you know, it's the old line, if you remember, look left, look right, half of you won't be here this time next year. I just think that kind of top-down management is past. I think that we have to recognize that employees want a voice, employees want to feel as if their ideas are being heard, they want companies to speak up on sustainability and on race and diversity and now on geopolitics. And again, this idea of it's the civil place, it's the place we can come together and actually talk about these issues really matters. Summer Fridays, I'm so glad you came here. And you were telling me that your father used to work here at Grand Central? He worked for CBS Radio up where those windows are um, for uh, Arthur Godfrey. And his real job was to get Arthur Godfrey out of bed in the morning and slap him into the chair at 7 a.m. and hand him the news. Really? Yeah. So 1946. So what is interesting, <laughs> what's interesting is everybody's got a Grand Central story. That's absolutely true, including my own when I came here when I was six years old and looked up here and thought I'd come to heaven. Thank you very much indeed. Good to see you. Richard Edelman for joining me. Thank you. I'm very glad you came down here today. Currently, 